Hi all, um, today I'm going to be talking to you about variables, the variables you would be looking at at a scientific experiment. So there are two types of variables. There are dependent variables, which is the variable being observed. So that's the variable you are interested in as a researcher, is the one that you're measuring, is the one that you're keeping close count of. And you have the independent variable, which is the variable that is being manipulated in the experiment. <clears throat> now, but manipulated means what you actually have control of. It's not exactly that you can manipulate, for example, sunlight, but you can manipulate how much sunlight goes through a window, for example. Okay. Now, also when graphing um, these variables, there's a sort of convention that the dependent variable goes always on the x on the y axis and the dependent variable goes always on the x axis now think about it this makes sense so it would look like this so the dependent variable is on the y axis and the independent on the x axis it makes sense because you can see the fluctuations of the dependent variable, which remember is the one that you can that you want to measure, and you can see the trends and so forth that it exhibits. Now let's look at a couple examples because you only truly learn something by practicing. So let's give it a shot. I have four cases and in each of them I want you guys to determine which are the variables and which one's dependent and which one's independent. Now I kept it simple, I kept it to experiments that have only two variables and they can be clearly identified as dependent or independent. Also some of the examples are impractical to actually measure but we will see that a little bit later at the end. Okay. First one is, a doctor believes patients who sleep in white sheets recover faster. Then you have a college professor wants to see whether the temperature in the room will negatively affect the student's performance. A biology student wants to determine which route to campus takes less time. A group of athletes wants to find out if the time they sleep affects their game performance. So these are our four examples and I'm going to go each uh, one by one and I'm going to explain to you what, how you get each of the variables. So the first one is a doctor believes patients who sleep in wet sheets recover faster. Then which one would be the dependent variable for this one? Okay, so you got to come and look at the actual data that they're giving you. So, so there is two possible variables, right? He is looking at the sheet color and how fast they, reco they recover. So which one of those is the doctor interested in? The doctor is interested in recovery time. So which patient recovers faster is important to the doctor. And what he's going to be looking at is the sheet color. So maybe you'll put different sheet colors, blue, green, tan, and then look at the recovery time of the patient. <clears throat> so the dependent variable would be the recovery time of the patient, and the independent variable would be the color of the sheets. Okay. Next example, a college professor wants to see whether the temperature of the room will negatively affect the student's performance. You got, again, you got the dependent and independent variables. So which one would be the dependent and which one would be the independent? So again, you have two variables. You have students' performance and you have temperature in the room. So the, doc, uh, the professor is interested in the performance of the students. Therefore, it would, he would be manipulating the temperature because you really can't manipulate the student's performance. So the student's performance is the dependent variable. That is the variable of interest in this experiment. 
Um, the independent variable would be the variable that is being manipulated. Say uh, the professor would put different temperatures in the room and see how the students respond to it, something like that. Okay, next example. A biology student wants to determine which route to campus takes less time. Now we have the dependent variable and the independent variable. So maybe you have two or three routes that you're going to look at and you're going to check how much time it takes that student to get to campus through each of the three routes. So which one would be the dependent variable? What are you actually measuring and what are you manipulating? So you are measuring how long it takes you to get to campus, so the time of travel, and which route do you pick? Okay, so the next one is a group of athletes wants to find out if the time they spend affects their game performance. You have the dependent and the independent variable. So you would be manipulating the sleeping time. How, how many hours do they sleep, for example? You'll have an athlete sleep 10 hours, another sleep 8, then 6, then 4, then 2, and see which one performs better. Now, this is one of those troublesome examples that I said because your dependent variable is game performance and as we discussed, the independent variable is sleep time. But game performance is a little bit abstract. You would have to decide how you measure game performance where their sleep time is really easy to measure. It's just in hours, minutes, seconds then game performance would be a little bit more complicated. What are you actually going to measure? So you should shy away from this kind of example or if you're actually performing an experiment with this, you want to be very, very specific as to what you're, uh, what you're testing. So how many goals they do or how many tackles, whatever the, the sport you're actually looking at. Okay, this is uh, just a summary of all of them. And we're done. Thank you for watching. Hope it was very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe.